Award season is upon us with the Golden Globes coming up on February 28th. We have seen lots of outstanding television and film over the course of this past year, but which one should you check out before the Globe ceremony? I got all the details on some of this year's best shows and films that were nominated for a Golden Globe, so don't go anywhere. How's it going, you guys? I'm Gabrielle Valenson. Now I know that you're here for all things award season. We're gonna break down some of those Golden Globe noms. But before we get into all of that, be sure that you are subscribed to the Holly Scoop channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell. Award season is already looking a little different this year due to the coronavirus pandemic. The Oscars, which are usually held in the beginning of February, were pushed all the way to mid-April, while the Golden Globes are happening over a month after they normally do. The Grammy Awards have also been postponed from its original January date to March 14th. The Tony Awards have even been postponed indefinitely until Broadway can reopen its doors again. Okay, back to the Golden Globes. Tina Fey and Amy Poehler are set to host the 70 annual Golden Globes together for the fourth time, but this year from opposite sides of the country. For the first time in Golden Globes history, the show will be by Coastal. Tina will be at the Rainbow Room in New York, while Amy will be at the Beverly Hilton in LA, where the show is usually held. There are 25 categories and Netflix is leading the way with a total of 42 noms, followed by Amazon Studios and HBO. Mank has the most noms on the film side, while The Crown has the most noms on the TV side. Now, before I I break down which nominated films and shows you need to watch before the ceremony, I think it's important to note that it was a huge year for female directors who made history with the most noms in one year. Three out of the five directors nominated for a Globe were women. Let's get started with the show that I think you all need to start if you haven't done so already. My personal favorite, Schitt's Creek, which is following The Crown earning five Globe nominations. They swept the Emmy comedy series categories last year. Eugene Levy, Dan Levy, Catherine O'Hara, and Annie Murphy are all nominated for their performance in the series, while the series as a whole is nominated for Best Television Series, Musical, or Comedy. The Canadian show first aired in 2015 on CBC and Pop TV and was available for streaming on Netflix a couple years after that. But Schitt's Creek didn't just explode overnight. Instead, it blew up at a time when other shows would start to wind down. By the time the final season aired last April, the series had completely taken taken off thanks to a mix of word of mouth and critical acclaim. And I have no doubt that it will continue to entertain huge Shits fans and new audiences for decades to come. Now, if you are unfamiliar with this show, let me give you the gist. The Roses are an incredibly wealthy family and one day they lose everything that they own except for a small town that was purchased as a joke one year for a birthday. And what is this small town called? Yep, Shits Creek. Audiences get to see the Rose family start their new life in this small town while growing together as a family, but also as individuals. And they ultimately become better people because of the town and its residents. It is a laugh out loud comedy that has also become quotable in pop culture. Ew, David, and oh my God, are just some of the best lines. Not only will it be hard to catch your breath, but it will also be difficult not to shed a few tears, especially as the roses evolve and change into better people. Dan Levy, who plays David Rose, co-created the show with his father, a comedy legend, Eugene Levy, who plays Johnny Rose. The show is beautifully written and has been called one of the most inventive shows on television. Dan told Out.com how he came up with the concept, saying, quote, I had been watching some reality TV at the time and was concentrating on what would happen if one of these wealthy families would lose everything. Would the Kardashians still be the Kardashians without their money? So if you are also asking yourself that question, then you will definitely enjoy this show. You can find it on Netflix, Hulu, Prime Video, and more. Another show that is a must watch before the Globe ceremony is a limited series called The Undoing, starring Nicole Kidman and Hugh Grant. Let me just tell you guys, this show will keep you hooked from beginning to end. I finished the six episode miniseries in less than 24 hours. I could not take my eyes away. It was the first HBO show to gain viewership every week as the season continued. This American mystery psychological thriller is up for the 
Golden Globe in the Best Limited Series, Anthology Series, or a Motion Picture Made for Television category. The show is a classic whodunit and will have you guessing and questioning every single character until the end. Nicole Kidman plays Grace Frazier, an affluent New York City therapist who is married to a children's oncologist, Jonathan Frazier, played by Hugh Grant. Things start to unravel after a gruesome murder and Grace begins to question her husband and the other people in her daily life. It's beautifully shot and very well written. There are clues as the series continues and you will find yourself saying things like, oh, that makes sense. And, oh yeah, I remember that. And, oh wow, I knew it after watching the series. I am giving away no spoilers, so definitely be sure to go watch for yourself if this sounds of any interest to you. Nicole Kidman and Hugh Grant are both nominated for their outstanding performances. The Prom is another must see, and it's the perfect movie for when you're missing Broadway or a live musical. The all-star cast includes Meryl Streep, James Corden, Nicole Kidman, Keegan-Michael Key, Andrew Rannells, and Carrie Washington. Broadway stars who are out of work decide to help a high school girl from a small town in Indiana who wants to take her girlfriend to the prom. The conservative, closed-minded town gets a shakeup when these bright, loud, outgoing theater stars show up. The script is clever, the scenes and costumes are colorful, the songs are catchy, and the storyline is meaningful. The film is nominated for a Golden Globe in the Best Picture, Musical, or Comedy category, and James Corden is also nominated for his performance in the film. I personally thought James was fantastic. Not only can he sing and dance, but he is actually a very talented actor. Another Broadway star who is in the best performance by an actor in a motion picture, musical, or comedy category with James is Hamilton creator and star Lin-Manuel Miranda. I'm looking forward to seeing who will take this award home. As I said earlier, the film that has a leading six nominations is the biographical drama Mank, starring Gary Oldman and Amanda Seyfried. David Fincher's dad, Jack Fincher, wrote the script in the 90s, and David was planning on directing it around that time, but then his father died in 2003 and it was never filmed. In July 2019, it was officially announced that filming was taking place in Los Angeles. The film was about screenwriter Herman J. Mankiewicz and his time developing the screenplay Citizen Kane. The acting is stellar and the cinematography has been highly praised. The entire film is actually shot in black and white, so it really feels like you are watching a film from the golden age of Hollywood. The film is up for Best Motion Picture Drama, Best Best Screenplay, and Best Original Score. David Fincher is nominated for Best Director, and Gary Oldman and Amanda Seyfried are also both nominated for their performances. I just want to quickly mention some of my favorite actors and actresses that are nominated for their roles this year. Jason Bateman for Ozark, Al Pacino for Hunters, Lily Collins for Emily in Paris, Jane Levy for Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, Shira Haas for Unorthodox, Anya Taylor-Joy for The Queen's Gambit, Jim Parsons for Hollywood, and Leslie Odom Jr. for One Night in Miami. All of these actors are so talented and their performances were incredible. I highly recommend all of these shows and films if you haven't already checked them out. Despite all of the production delays, I think we were still able to see a lot of incredible films, limited series, and television this year. Even though this award season may look a little different than it normally does, it will still be a year to remember because there are so many projects and actors to celebrate. So I need to know, how excited are you guys for award season. Which series, films, and actors are you hoping to see take home a Golden Globe or maybe even a few? Also, what were your favorite movies and shows this year? Let me know your thoughts on all things Golden Globes in the comments down below. Let's start a conversation. And for more on celeb news and award season and all of that good stuff, be sure to check out The Morning Tea. After that, make sure that you are subscribed to the Holly Scoop channel. And don't forget to give this video a like, Share it with your friends and hit that notification bell.